Your Google Home is changing significantly and this includes new updates, new features, and even new speakers and products, including a massive, massive set of changes coming to the Android TV platform that will change the world of Chromecasts for you. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by keeping you up to date in your Google Home, Google Nest and Chromecast and Nest Wi-Fi products. We have all of those on the channel today so let's get right into the updates. In case you hadn't noticed, the original Google Home speaker is no longer available on the Google Store and if you can find it in the market, it is severely discounted. This goes hand in hand with some severe discounts to the Google Home Max, which I'll explain in a second. But what you can basically do with your Google Home original speaker at this point is kind of unplug it, set it aside, and prepare for the eBay sales when the price starts to go up because it's clearly an antique at this point. Now, what Google is actually doing is addressing what I think was a big problem in the lineup. See, you had the Google Home speaker and then you had the Google Home Max and the price difference between those two was astronomical and I never wanted to go and buy a Google Home Max because it was too pricey. Now, what they're doing with this new speaker that they are going to launch in 2020 is they are going to bridge the gap in terms of sound quality. So I think we're gonna see a split of the difference and probably not a major increase in price. But as of now, we do not have a firm release date for this new Google Nest speaker. And while we know that speaker will look a lot like the Google Nest Mini, that new kind of cloth look that Google has been promoting on their newer products, we don't have those firm dates for that or really anything else inside of Google right now. None of their release dates have been firmed up and what we have continued to see is problems in manufacturing, problems in supply chain, and really what the biggest problem is right now is that they are delaying based on people not actually being able to go and see products in stores and so we are actually seeing delays in the lineups for the this Google Home speaker and the newer Google Nest Hub that we've talked about on the channel as well as the Pixel 4a and Pixel 5 phones and it looks like now we won't see a Pixel 4a until August and a Pixel 5 is at least into October. Now I'm just going to stop for a second and tell you that normally I do the Pixel updates but there are so many right now that have come out from Google that I'm actually going to shoot a separate video and I'll put that link down below as the pinned comment here when I get that released on Wednesday. For those of you who own a Lenovo Smart Display like me, an LG ThinQ speaker, a JBL Link View, all of these Google Assistant enabled speakers that are from other manufacturers, well, you've been missing some features for a while and that has been a major issue. But Google is actually releasing three different features on those devices that are really important and bring them much closer to the the original Google Home or Google Nest products. Now those three features are voice match, which is very important, the wake word sensitivity and default speaker settings all are going to be available on those speakers. Now, I'm betting you guys still have other issues that exist on those speakers, but this is a major change. I don't know about you, but in my home, the Wi-Fi system has gotten a little bit slower with a slower connection from my ISP. Just the fact that everyone is working from home, kids are at home, attending school, video calls going on, all kinds of multimedia streaming. Well, again, Google is paying attention to this and I really like their approach to how the pandemic has been going. Yes, there are product delays, but they have really been focusing on some software or upgrades to different systems and we're gonna talk about a couple, but this first one is actually to your Nest Wi-Fi or your Google Wi-Fi system. Now really what you're getting are the normal stability and security updates, but you're also going to see improved speed, especially over slower internet connection speed. So this is really important. It's going to help prioritize the things and actually give you access to an improved prioritization feature that allows you to set a device 
as priority for a time period. Now, that feature is getting an update very soon here in the Google Home application. And this next update is a clear example of Google going out and addressing real world problems that exist because of the pandemic and because so many people are working from home. And again, this is something I have had to use quite a bit. That is Google Duo video calling. And this is a feature that has become critical. It works great with the smart displays, but what we haven't had is the ability to chat with multiple people on smart displays. Now, what Google has actually gone out and done is they have changed their web application to be able to support up to 32 people. And I got to have a bit of a back and forth with one of the directors at Google. So Naz, and I hope I'm saying that correctly, she and I had this little back and forth about the 32 people and whether or not it was going to extend because clearly if I left this update at Chrome, web browser, 32 people, Google Duo, you're all instantly asking, uh, what about the phones? What about the smart displays? Well, Sanaz actually confirmed in the next couple of weeks that we will have access to the full 32 people calls on both the applications on iOS and Android and smart displays. Now, I think that kind of a feature might turn into a benefit for our patrons over on Patreon, but we'll have to talk about that as a group over there. Now, what I think you want to look at next is if you have multiple phones in your home and you've ever asked Google to find my phone, if you had more than two registered to your account, it couldn't actually go out and find those other ones. Well, there was a great video on Twitter and Google actually confirmed that this new feature is alive and well. You can actually get up to nine phones located and what you will find is that it will ask you about phone one and then if you say no, it'll ask you about the different phones that you have on your account, which one you'd like to locate. Coming up to the channel will be a video that I think addresses one of the major gaps that I still see on smartphones and that is the ability to create a real control panel or a real one tap button interface that that you can manage a lot of your life with. And, and I think right now we are all dealing with so many applications and so many things that we have to do that this becomes such an important component of our lives. Now, the application is actually called Action Blocks and there's a few videos out there. We have one over on our tutorial page, but Alan has put together a number of different articles that help you do specific things with Action Blocks. Now, when I create that video, I promise you're going to see it here on the channel as I think a lot of people are going to be very interested in what I've created. If you remember our last Google Home or Google Nest updates video, well, we talked about a payment card that Google was coming out with and I kind of alluded to the fact that this signaled a shift in terms of Google trying to give us more payment and more purchasing options with their voice assistant. Now, this is coupled with a new feature that you probably do not have access to because this is a very slow rollout. It's actually just to a set of test users, but it is is a voice match for confirming purchases and it will be available on all devices. So it will be available on your Google Home, Google Nest, your Pixel phones or your Google Assistant enabled phones and really any of those devices that have voice match on them. Now sitting over here is a new Nest Mini and a new Nest Hub and I didn't buy those products but I want to tell you how I got them and it starts with a tweet actually from Tech with Brett that kind of explained how you could potentially get these products but you know what, the first choice is, do you want a Nest Aware subscription? And I think, you know what, number one, there's a video I did that really walks through the benefits of the new subscription versus the old subscription and whether or not you want to convert. It includes lots of good information on that, but it did not include the fact that you could get these new devices if you do this right. And what I did is I went with a new account that had never been signed up with a a Nest Aware subscription and then I, or at least not in the last 
year or so. And then I went and I signed up for a yearly subscription and I said I would pay that all up front. Now they hadn't actually charged my card, but I started to get emails. This was on day two of having signed up for that and this was on day three. Both of these came in an email to that account and said, we have a free product for you. And you just followed the process through and it was a few days later that both of these showed up at my home. Now the Nest Hub Max becomes a really great component within that Nest Aware subscription because it really gets all of the features and updates or upgrades for that. It's a Nest camera plus a Google speaker and it really has access to everything. So go watch that video, get clear on which devices you want, but this has also gotten a couple of kind of sneak, sneaky or sneaked in features there and really that ultrasonic sensing, you know what, people really consider that as just being when you come up, you get a new interface if you're playing music, but Google is starting to extend the features there. And what I noticed very recently was a switch in terms of how the timer looked when you were far away and then you came up closer to the device. It actually changed the interface and when you're further away, it definitely is clearer how much time you have left on your timer. Now we are all waiting for a much larger update to routines because that guys is going to give us the access to triggers and this is really the important missing component of routines within Google Nest. But while we're waiting, there are a couple of new things that I have found. Now, number one, I don't know how many of you have seen this in the past, but there's actually the ability to, within a routine, set your security system into home, away, or disarmed mode. And the other thing that you can do is set or, or get the Google Home within a routine to request what time to set your alarm for. And obviously that should be a part of any good night routine. Over time, Google has done a pretty good job and I know there's been some back and forth on decisions they've made, but over time they've done a pretty good job of bringing the Nest products under their umbrella. And I actually sat down with one of my patrons very recently and walked through his conversion process from the old Nest account to the new Google account. He had decided it was finally time to look at the whole situation and we walked through it stem to stern and we talked about the things that he might lose and the things that he uh, won't lose and really his system came across very easily, very quickly and that's great news. Some things that I've heard people lose like the NST manager in SmartThings, that's obviously a big component for a lot of people and I actually had someone last week say they lost the Nest app on Apple TV when they made the conversion. So there are still things out there that you are going to lose as you convert across. But one of the things that has become so important with that within this is that Google account protection has continued to get applied to Nest products. And one of the really important components of Google account protection is called advanced protection. And really what this is, is the ability for you to have a physical key that you would need to have with you to log into your Google account. And this is obviously really important for high risk people or people that have a higher risk of being attacked online. So this is a really important thing. And when you do that conversion, what's coming to the Nest products, it's not yet available, is this advanced protection. So if you're someone who's really concerned, this is a great route and a great reason to look at that conversion process. You and I, we get to integrate products into Google Home or Google Assistant, and that's really as far as we get to go, but developers get access to something called the Google Assistant API, and that API has device types in it, and as the device types are created by Google, that means that we get new functionality, new capabilities, and new device types or new products in the market that we can go and buy and get integrated with Google Home and Google Assistant. Now there's four new device types to tell you about freezers, coolers, and doorbells, as well as something called stylers that I'm sure someone somewhere cares about. But what's really interesting about the doorbell is that we already have doorbells that work with Google Home, but 
What happened in this latest version is something that I think is very interesting because the Nest Hello today is the only device that can automatically show up when someone rings the doorbell on a Google Assistant enabled smart display. Now recently we've actually seen the Arlo doorbell get integrated with Google Home and Google Assistant and what we should see over time is that all of those different doorbells that you have if they have integration with Google Home or Google Assistant, they get those same capabilities as the Nest Hello to actually just pop up on screen. So this is a really important development, but it is not something that you're going to see tomorrow. One of the things that probably frustrates you as much as it frustrates me is the fact that Amazon skill library and skill capability is light years ahead of Google Assistant actions, but Google is actually moving a little bit to kind of narrow that gap at the very least. Now, one of the things that they have recently put out to developers is called home storage. And this will allow save points basically within those actions. This is really important for saving spots in things like puzzles or games, or if you're watching long form content on a skill, you're listening or, or watching, you're going to be able to kind of save that. And this will be per person in your smart home that has been voice matched. Google is obviously a major driver of everything web-based. And so when they produce new standards, which they do all the time for website owners or website creators, it severely impacts things. But one of the biggest problems we have with these displays right now is that we can't really look at a lot of web pages or it's not a very easy thing to do. Now, they have a standard out there called AMP or Accelerated Mobile Pages and this is intended to actually be used on the smart display. So this is an upcoming enhancement. It's not something you're going to see today and we're hearing that a lot because Google is kind of putting these pieces together and then rolling them out over time. But accelerated mobile pages will allow you to actually see full news articles. That's kind of what it's initially intended for instead of just the video news that we kind of get right now and some snippets of news that we can ask for from the Google Assistant. So without a full browser coming, this is the next best thing for news articles. Now I actually get to show you how to transfer your music from Google Play Music to YouTube Music. There is a transfer tool available that many of you can go and use right now and move across. So let me show you that. You can actually start at music.youtube.com slash transfer. And as long as you are logged into the right account, which you can do top right, you can see my icon for the channel there, then actually they just bring you to this page if you're allowed to start the transfer. And that is the entire process right there. In a couple of hours on your phone, you will find that this little notification is there. Speaking of streaming apps, now that you kind of have your YouTube music transferred, Quippy, if you don't know what that is, that's actually a portrait mode video service and it has shorter episodes of things. They're like eight to 12 minutes long. So they're kind of shorter, but they're also in portrait mode. Now that has become Chromecast capable at this point. So it remains to be seen how people enjoy that kind of a format on a Chromecast, but you can do it. Back when Google bought Fitbit, I thought that was kind of an odd purchase and you know they really haven't done much to integrate things at this point and it was really funny because the newest Versa 2 which which at the time was really the newest product had Amazon's voice assistant on it but it looks as though we are going to get Google Assistant integration onto that product. Now, unfortunately, I returned that product because it was disconnecting all the time. But what's really funny about this situation is that Google and Fitbit, that deal has not actually been fully approved. It is still in the approval process. So this is happening outside of any actual merger going on between these two companies. There are just a ton of updates coming for Android TV and in a lot of cases you're going to not see these just yet 
as they're in demo mode and they go through those slow rollouts that Google is doing. But if you have Nvidia Shield as a streaming device, we've already seen a few of these come out there and some of them actually pulled back. Now, we're going to see Android TVs get integrated with the speaker groups. We already know that that feature came out and was pulled back. Other things that we will see though, I think are just as exciting. There's a whole new Google Assistant UI that allows you to search things like movies, shows, games, get general information, and all of this is going to be coupled with voice match so that they can provide you personalized recommendations for shows and games, and, and the games will be through Stadia, right? So this is really coming together as a full system for entertainment. With voice match and those personalized results comes the ability to manage subscriptions. So things like Netflix, things like Disney+, Plus, all through that store on your Android TV and all of this is being developed in order to support a new Chromecast Ultra device. Now we've actually seen the Chromecast device get reduced in price right now. It looks like it's dropped five dollars but the new Chromecast Ultra device is codenamed Sabrina and it's going to have all of these features plus a couple of extras including the ability to trigger a low latency mode on TVs that have that mode. So that'll be good for games on things like Stadia but it will also have a Bluetooth enabled remote and and this is a big deal for a lot of people that remote can actually bring up that Google Assistant interface now the fact is you're going to want to know more about that device and I have actually created a video with all of the details that we have for that new Chromecast Ultra it's up on screen you can go watch that now otherwise guys thanks for watching and of course don't hate automate